Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to start our next session. The leadership panel presenting the Internet We Want paper. If you could please take your seats. Uh, thank you very much, and thank you for your patience. I know that we are the ones that are between you and the gala dinner, but I assure you this will be a, a great session. Um, just as a form of introduction, uh, the leadership panel was established by the United Nations um, Secretary General last August, and um, it is supposed to be a strategic empowered and multi-stakeholder body to support and strengthen the IGF. It has um, three key functions, and one is to provide strategic inputs and advice on the IGF. The second one is to promote the IGF and its outputs, supporting both high-level and at-large multi-stakeholder engagement in the IGF and also fund, IGF fundraising efforts. And the um, last priority is to exchange IGF outputs from the forum to other fora and also vice versa and bringing it back into the IGF and also leveraging the right MAG expertise. So they are working in concert with the multi-stakeholder advisory group of the IGF. And the panel consists of 10 members it's chaired by Vince Cerf and our vice chair is Maria Ressa. They will introduce themselves later, uh, going down. And there is also five ex-official members. Um, one is the Secretary General's Envoy on Technology, and the other one is the um, current MAG chair, and followed by three, which is the current um, host of the IGF, the previous host of the IGF, and the upcoming host of the IGF. So with that, I'll give the floor to the chair of the leadership panel, Mr. Vincev, to take it on from here. Thank you, well, thank you so much, Jangatai, and, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for your patience as we got ourselves organized. Uh, in case you're wondering about the empty chair, uh, we're hoping that uh, the uh, tech envoy, uh, Amandeep Gill, will be able to join us uh, when he gets here. In the meantime, uh, what we would like to talk to you about is a paper that uh, the leadership panel developed over the past uh, several months. It's called The Internet We Want. And uh, what I would like to emphasize for you uh, is that the term internet in this context is far broader than simply the thing connecting computers together, which to be quite frank, was what I was focused on 50 years ago when the internet project was first launched. But 50 years later, it is everything is connected to everything, including you and me, people, internet of things, devices and, and uh, businesses, uh, governments, all kinds of, of different parts of our planet are interconnected, not as completely as we would like uh, and, uh, and not as usefully always as we would like. And that's why we want to talk to you about the internet and writ large that we collectively think that we want and will work towards and we hope that you will join us uh, in this. Uh, uh, the Internet Governance Forum, as you well know, has been underway for 18 years. And in that time, it has itself evolved along with the Internet. And I might say it must continue to evolve in order to satisfy the needs of this growing online digital environment. And I am proud to say that I have every confidence that the IGF, and, uh, and its uh, secretariat, and all of you who make up its activities will continue to evolve to meet the needs of this uh, demanding online environment. 
So I also want to acknowledge uh, Paul Mitchell, who is in the middle there. Paul, if you'll raise your hand. He is the outgoing chair of the MAG. I would like to invite you to thank him, perhaps prematurely, because he does not escape until the end of the week. But can I uh, ask that we acknowledge all of the hard work? Of course, as, uh, as Paul will tell you, a great deal of what he is capable of accomplishing is done through the very, very active support of the Secretariat. Uh, finally, uh, I'm going to uh, just mention a few specific things what I'm going to, about this paper that I would like to draw to your attention. Uh, and then I'm going to ask various of the panel members to make some specific remarks, and I'll introduce them as we, uh, as we do that. So with regard to the paper, the internet we want, the thing that we would like most clearly is that it stays whole. That is to say, it is connected. I could not overemphasize the importance of connectivity. It was the fundamental purpose of the network, was to provide connectivity among computer-based systems way, way back in 1973, at the time focused on the needs of the American Defense Department looking for the use of computers in command and control. How far we have come from that initial vision to something far greater, far more powerful, and far more challenging to manage, as you will hear in the rest of this session. We wanted to also stay as open as we can possibly make it. Once again, why is that important? Because it's the free flow of information, which we heard about this morning in the first session, that animates this system, that makes it useful. Without the flow of information, this is a dead object which doesn't do anything useful. However, as we maintain connectivity, we have discovered, let us say, unanticipated or at least undesirable consequences of this massive connectivity. And we've discovered, frankly, that people are people, and they take advantage of technologies that have this kind of amplification capacity for purposes that perhaps you and I would agree are not in anyone's best interest, or at least certainly not in everyone's best interest. So we want to keep the internet whole and open, and that is the beginning of the discussion that this paper contemplates. Last point I want to make is that this is not a static paper. The leadership panel recognizes that the evolution of the internet, the evolution of IGF, and this paper must go into the future anticipating further changes and developments as we learn how to solve some of the problems that we encounter today. So I'm going to turn next to uh, uh, Maria Fernanda, who has been on the uh, stage several times already. She's the board chair of the ICC and a very respected member of the panel. And Maria Fernanda is going to speak to the universal and inclusive nature of the internet we want. I'll be calling on a few other of the board members specifically, after which I will be asking them for general remarks about their um, involvement in this uh, desirable properties of the internet. But let me call on Maria Fernanda first. Maria. Thank you very much, Bint. One of the key characteristics of the internet we want is for it to be universal and inclusive for everyone. The internet today underpins agriculture, energy, healthcare, manufacturing, and education. It has fundamentally changed the way people interact with their peers, business, and governments. Universal and meaningful connectivity can drive economic development, improve education, healthcare, and access to information while fostering innovation and social inclusion. However, despite significant progress in expanded internet access, 2.6 billion people remain unconnected. Some of those people lack a way to get online or cannot afford to do so, requiring further infrastructure and innovative technological policy approaches to expand connectivity. 
However, it's not just about providing infrastructure. Some people may not have the skills to use digital technologies in the way they want. Some might not have a reason to go online because there is no contact which gives them a compelling reason to engage in digital technologies or which is not in their language. We need to be cognizant of the way in which these three things, access, skills, and applications, interact to reinforce digital divides. Achieving this goal will require collaborative efforts from governments, business, civil society, and other stakeholders to ensure that the internet is accessible, affordable, and beneficial to everyone, everywhere. To expand meaningful connectivity, all stakeholders must have a better understanding of how information and communication technologies work in practice, including the ICT ecosystem, the roles of stakeholders, and relevant policy issues. Frameworks for the internet connectivity should be based on light touch policies and regulations that encourage universal access, competition, innovation, and the development of new technologies. Efforts to deliver universal connectivity should balance the needs of all stakeholders, be data-driven, promote interoperability and standards, and facilitate investment across the digital value chain. The Internet We Want paper calls on all stakeholders to set goals for achieving universal, meaningful connectivity, promoting the adoption of new technologies and addressing skill gaps. We count on the IGF community to help us in formulating those goals, set the metrics to measure the progress, and think about how they can move this work forward together and faster. Thank you, Bint. Oh, thank you so much. And Maria, as always, your words are very thoughtful and, uh, and also challenge us uh, to move ahead along the lines that you suggest. Uh, I'd like to call now on our Vice Chair, um, Maria Ressa, to speak to the free-flowing and trustworthy nature of the Internet. And she, you heard from her earlier uh, today on some of the difficulties that we encounter that she has personally encountered in this online environment. So, Maria, the chair, is, or the microphone anyway, and the floor is yours. Thanks, Ben. Um, this is one of the five pillars that we had put together for the internet we want. I am the novice, and I deferred to the collective wisdom of the group in so many ways. Uh, but the panel this morning also tackled this that data flows. Data is the, the core part of the internet today. It is the lifeblood of the internet. But it must be free-flowing and trustworthy. The cross-border data flows that really underpin the delivery of these public services that we need, everyday business functions, and collaboration um, for which the processing and transfer of both personal and non-personal data are integral, making trust a vital element for resilient and sustainable economic growth. This earlier, in the earlier panel, I talked about the social harms, the way the data, the manipulation of data can tear us apart, but far more important now is really, what is the vision of how we are going to be able to pull this together? We believe trust is key. It's strengthened when governments adopt robust and comprehensive commitments to protect the rights and freedoms of individuals, of all of us, including the fundamental right to privacy. Cooperation between governments and all is needed to set interoperable policy frameworks that would facilitate the cross-border data flows. We call on the stakeholders of the internet, that is, all of us, to set goals to unlock the value of the data flows for sustainable development and enshrine trust 
as the prerequisite for data sharing regimes founded on the protection of data. Every time I listen to you, Maria, I think how important it is that we listen to your experience and also the challenges that you put before us. Trust is incredibly hard to gain and easy to lose. You've heard that more than once and it's worth reiterating. What I think is most serious is figuring out how to build trust into the system. And the part that I find the most troubling is that there is no magic that technology will introduce to make trust happen. Trust is a concept between people and institutions. It, we learn trust from experience. It's not a magic bullet that a digital signature assures. Accountability is important. The ability to identify parties is important. How would we do business transactions without that? We learn to trust because we learn to trust sources of information based on experience. So we have a long ways to go in this online environment to establish the kinds of trust that we learned to establish in the offline environments that we've lived in for so many years. Well, speaking of safety and security, uh, Lisa Fuhr, who is the Director General of the European Telecommunications Network Operators and a distinguished member of this panel, has something to tell us about safety and security. So Lisa. Thank you, Vint. And uh, cybersecurity and security has been one of the things close to my heart for many, many years. So I'm very glad to be talking about this uh, with this esteemed uh, panel and these esteemed colleagues, because this is a, a brain trust of, of many uh, people with different backgrounds and, and different uh, approach to internet and and security in general. But uh, the more embedded the and the more digital uh, our lives becomes, we need, to, of course, to make sure that cyberspace is uh, safe and, and secure. And it's not only the internet, as, as we also started with saying, it's, it's everything digital, because it's more than the internet today. It's internet of things, but it's also AI, and it's uh, the things that are underpinning uh, the systems, underpinning our uh, uh, software, uh, uh, anything related to uh, cars, banks, etc. We are so strongly depending on digital, we're strongly depending on the internet, so we need to make uh, sure that it's well functioning. And uh, the I can chair, Tripti Sinha, said it very beautifully earlier today. She said, tech is built for people, and we need to make sure that it brings value to people. And I think being safe and secure is another thing underpinning the value of, of anything uh, in tech. So strengthening cybersecurity is, is one uh, target that we think is extremely important in the leadership panel. But of course we need to make it safe without jeopardizing the openness and without uh, harming any trust in, in the internet. And security is an area where all parts of the internet ecosystem need to work together to ensure it. So we need uh, um, an internet that would stay safe and secure, but we also need to have a joint effort to, to make sure that this is happening. And that's why we think it's important that we, or even paramount, sorry, that we will set goals to establish and implement robust frameworks for cybersecurity, including legal structures, practices, and cross-border cooperation to combat cybercrime. But again, uh, this is something we need to talk about and set goals and measures together. And this is why it's important we're here to reach out to all of you to understand how you see it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa. I want to emphasize something that, uh, that she mentioned. She used the word software. It's really important for everyone in this room to recognize that the internet is made up of software. It is an extremely diverse ecosystem. And the fact that these are artifacts created by human beings 
I don't know, set aside the fact that some uh, large language models seem to be able to write programs as well. That's an interesting thing to contemplate. The pro our problems with software relate to the fact that we can never do this perfectly. Moreover, I use the word diverse ecosystem on purpose. The vast array of, of devices that are part of the internet represent not a single uniform uh, and um, you know, unified system. It is a, an extremely diverse ecosystem of software. And no surprise that it doesn't always work perfectly. So our safety and security here is an objective, but it's not something that I expect we could guarantee. And let us pretend for a moment that the internet was in fact actually purely, absolutely safe and secure, that would still not protect us against some of the problems that Maria points out, because people would use the safe and secure internet to pass misinformation, disinformation, hate speech, and all the other problems that we've encountered. So safety and security are necessary, but not sufficient to, cre to create the internet that we want. Speaking of rights and rights respecting aspects, I'd like to call on Gabenga Sassan, uh, who is uh, the executive director of uh, Paradigm in Nigeria. So, Gabenga, the floor is yours. Thank you, Vint. So, 75 years ago, um, in Paris, everyone, um, you know, various countries, various stakeholders agreed on one thing. It's always tough to agree on one thing, but we all agreed. Uh, on human rights. Um, a lot has changed in those 75 years, but one thing hasn't changed. The fact that dignity is still at the center of human experience and, and, and expectation. And that's why, as part of the internet we want, uh, we strongly believe that human rights must be respected online and offline. Um, and in all forms of expressions of online, be it on the internet, be it on digital devices, um, or be it on devices that don't exist yet. And of course we have learned that certain behaviors on the internet can be very harmful to our societies, but the internet we want is one where everyone is protected from those, those harms. A human rights-based approach to internet governance is required to realize the full potentials and full benefits of the internet. There are many opportunities, there are many problems that we wish to solve using the internet, and we may not be able to do that if we do not uh, make sure that rights are respected. And this is including the right to education. As we learned three years ago, when people had to go online to go to school, it was impossible for many children across the world to learn. Um, we know today that those children not only lost what they could have learned, but they also lost skills that their contemporaries were able to pick up because they were online and were able to moderate their own expectations and learning experiences. Not just in education, also participation in public and cultural life. The right to gather, the right to discuss, the right to participate is absolutely important. And anything that restricts such participations is something we need to work on so that we can realize the full potential of the internet. Or also of access to information. Of course, not just access to information that we want people to hear, but access to information. And we must also ensure the rights of businesses of all sizes. And I like that we've emphasized here that it's businesses of all sizes because there are small businesses uh, that may fight for attention, but their rights must also be protected in this space. And these reasons are why we say that every stakeholder, from government to civil society to private sector to the technical community to the media to every, every other stakeholder must set goals to ensure that a human rights based approach is what we take to internet governance and to promote digital rights in this online space. And like I said earlier, you know, we had that conversation 75 years ago. We don't know what 75 years from now will look like, 
But at least one thing we do know is that human dignity will be at the center of human expectation uh, and experiences, and we must respect that right now, online and offline. You know, I listen to Kibenga, and you, you just want to do what he's saying. You know, you just, you're so, so passionate about this. Uh, what I conclude as I listen, though, to what Kibenga had to say is that we are not likely to achieve perfection in this aspiration. In the absence of perfection, we must achieve correction. We must mid-course correct our vector in the Internet's evolution in order to get closer to that very desirable outcome that Gabenga so beautifully expressed. So I'd like to call on Hurya uh, now to speak to the problems that she faces uh, in Ethiopia. She is uh, the, let me get this right here, State Minister of Innovation and Technology. Now there is a wonderful title and a huge burden. So I would like to hear from you, uh, Hurya, about the challenges you see in your country to get the internet in place so people can use it. Okay. <clears throat> thank you so much. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, what do we want, uh, or the internet we want in our country, especially as I am living in Africa? So what we really need is we need to connect with all over the world. This is the priority of uh, our country. How is the basic cost? How we can make it? How we can connect with the other world is the major thing. So to do this, the first thing is we need to have the infrastructure. We need to provide the internet access for all in the country and in the uh, continent. So to do this, we need to have a common infrastructure to have to, uh, to spread or improve the accessibility of all people connecting uh, the internet. So while we are having a common infrastructure that we are going to have a common uh, content, or because we are living in a diverse uh, country, di diverse society. So they, uh, especially if we check Ethiopia, we have more than 18 languages in the country. So while they are having uh, the infrastructure, they need to uh, use it in their own language too. So we need to work on the content they have to use the internet to content. To do this, we need to uh, work on the digital skills, the development of the skills, digital uh, literacy. So uh, when people have the literacy, they can use the technology, they can learn from technology, and they can create a technology because they, they easily understand uh, what does it mean. So the first thing we are working on building the infrastructure, which is connectivity and power, and the other infrastructures which are needed, it has to be worked first. Then the enabling systems, digital, enabling systems like digital ID, digital payments, and cybersecurity. So they will follow after the infrastructure. So the third one would be the uh, platforms, which are very important to interact, to interact with uh, the uh, different technology uh, activities like e-government, e-service, and e-commerce. So our people are working uh, on that. So the ecosystem is the most important thing. We need to uh, 
the center our people. Our work has to be centric on the people. We need to work on the, if they have the, uh, the skills, the digital skills, uh, it's easy to use uh, the technology uh, for them. So we are working on the, on the uh, people to have the uh, necessary skills. So when they have the skills, they can use uh, the, the technologies and they can work on that uh, issues. So in Ethiopia, what we did is we already uh, launched the Digital Ethiopia 2025 strategy. So with four pillars, building the infrastructure and uh, like connectivity, we liberalize the telecom uh, sector. So we are inviting uh, different telecom uh, sectors to our country. So this will, we are expecting that it will improve the uh, quality service of, because not having the infrastructure is not enough. It has to be quality. The services has to be uh, quality and accessibility is the most important thing, meaningful accessibility. When we are saying meaningful accessibility, it has to be, the services has to be quality in terms of internet, in terms of using uh, mobile uh, services. And it has to be reasonable also. Affordability is the, the critical thing. Even though there is uh, some infrastructures, uh, some, uh, some services, if they are not affordable, they cannot uh, use it. So it has to be affordable not only in terms of the price, in terms of the devices they are using. Uh, so we need to invest a lot to, uh, to provide reasonable uh, devices, price of devices of the country, and the content also very important. To do this, uh, people are competing and working uh, on that. So this is how we are uh, working at a country level, especially building the ecosystem is strengthening our financial sectors to support our innovative young people who are creating a lot of new technologies, advanced technologies. So we need to uh, support, uh, to coordinate because I always believe that the world will have a common goal to make a better place, a better world for every humanity. So this is for all of us. We need to cooperate. We need to collaborate to make a better world for everyone. So we need to connect those people who are not connected yet. As we know, the, the, the number is big. Which are, so we have to connect that. To do so, we need to work together. We need to uh, collaborate on the world. Thank you. So there you have uh, the, the global picture in one country. All the problems that we're faced with uh, show up in Ethiopia. It's a, it's a fractal uh, system. Everything is recursive. All, if you solve your problems, you will help us solve those same problems around the rest of the world. Uh, I'd like to call on uh, Carolina Edstadler next, who is the uh, Federal Minister for the European Union and the Constitution in Austria, who is never at a loss for words, uh, and uh, who's uh, been introduced to you earlier. So Carolina, perhaps you can help us see this internet we want from your perspective as a legislator. Thank you so much, Wind, godfather of the internet, if I may say so. Um, I just wanted to give it a big picture because uh, you were maybe impressed or not impressed by what we are presenting to you, but I would like to show you that it was not so easy when we started our work. We are 
um, spread all over the world. We started our first debates uh, online. Okay, this is maybe normal for an internet governance forum leadership <laughs> panel. But on the other hand, if you don't know each other, it's not so easy. You have to get to know each other. And we all know how we suffered during the, during the pandemic, not getting into touch with each, with each other. So now we know each other quite well, I would say. We met uh, for the first time, as I remember, in a physical way in Ethiopia. Um, I invited the group also to Vienna, almost all of the group were there. Uh, and now it's the, the, the next event after Gen uh, Geneva, Geneva, Genf in Austria, uh, Geneva in, in Switzerland, and, and now here in Tokyo. And I think we are in many steps forward now in the meantime, because we have this paper, the internet we want. We can feed to this paper. We have some pillars, as Maria Ressa uh, mentioned. Uh, there is also something which uh, is very important from my view, the rights approach. So we have to, the need to have a human rights uh, approach uh, also for, for the, for the uh, maybe the, 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 the regulations we need without stopping innovation. So, and this is what we reached also in civil society. There is a lot more of awareness. And of course, everyone has AI in his or her hands uh, with uh, ChatGPT and other uh, applications. So this is the work, how we try to um, fulfill our mandate also, which should end in August next year, maybe a bit later, because uh, we want to feed into the digital global compact also. And uh, we are, of course, open for your ideas and recommendations also and your experiences because I think AI is learning a lot every day. So do we, at least we try, uh, even if we are not that quick. Uh, and uh, we hope also for your contributions. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, Carolina. And on that last point, for all of you, those who are listening and those who are on the distribution list for the IGF, we hope that you will take some time to read this paper and react to it. We want to express what we believe are your principles and your aspirations. If we have not done so, we need to know that. And so we ask you, please, to respond with your ideas uh, and your comments and, and criticisms. Um, I, we have a few other speakers that I would like to call upon, and we we'll, won't quite end at uh, 6.15, but we'll try to be crisp about this. I'd like to, uh, to ask um, Hiroshi, uh, Yoshida-san, uh, you are our host, in some sense, here in uh, Japan, here in Kyoto. And may I say, it has been a magnificent reception. The organization is spectacular. The venue is beautiful. Uh, and, uh, and we are taking a great advantage and pleasure in meeting here. But what is important is what you have learned from your involvement with the panel, and your engagement uh, with the internet in Japan and elsewhere, what else would you add to what we've already said about the internet we want? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Bint. And uh, first of all, I would like to welcome you all to Kyoto. And uh, this is an ancient uh, city, um, and uh, it's a very beautiful place. And uh, I, I hope you have a time to look around this city. And um, about the internet we want, yes, uh, why, why do you think internet has developed for these uh, 50 years? So I think that it is open and free um, network system. And uh, the centered concept is a uh, human-centered uh, network. And also, one more question. Why IGF, Internet Governance Forum, is, uh, is attracting many people? So it is a multi-stakeholder approach. So many, any, so any stakeholders can come together and discuss how we can improve the internet. And uh, so that uh, more and more people are taking part in the discussion here. And uh, this year, more than 8,000 uh, registrants and um, 6,000 of them are in person. And uh, 70 or 80 percent are coming from abroad. And um, so 
these two concepts are very important. Of course, we have many challenges uh, as, uh, um, as referred to by previous speakers. So we still, um, we still now on the way of building up trust. So Japan advocated the concept of data free food trust in G20 Osaka meeting in 2019. And um, now we, so that concept is well known now, but uh, we think that it should be shifted to operational stage, not conceptual stage. So we want to accelerate uh, data flow by building up trust. And of course, other issues, including cybersecurity and uh, other things, uh, new challenges are coming up, and uh, we, we should, uh, we should uh, cope with them. Um, and uh, also, new technology are coming up, and uh, so there are many evolutions. And um, um, it, of course, uh, for example, so a network system is changing from uh, fixed network to mobile system, and uh, now there are many non-terrestrial systems. So Leo satellites are very typical, and uh, we also have a newer system that is called HAPS High Altitude Platform System. So we should not hesitate to introduce those uh, new technologies. Of course, uh, there are many challenges uh, to doing so. Uh, for example, for generative AI, we have many challenges. Uh, uh, there are long, uh, we are starting a long, long discussion, but uh, we, the technology is going so fast, so we should uh, do, do it in a very short period. We, we should um, ch so cope with those challenges in a very short period. It is a very hard task, but uh, we should do it. But anyway, so, um, so there are many challenges and there are many new technologies coming up, but uh, what we should keep Something, a uh, basic concept that should not be changed. There are uh, some points. That's what I uh, referred to in the first point. Uh, it is open and free and uh, human-centered and multi-stakeholder approach. Those concepts should be kept. And uh, with that uh, basic concept, uh, we should uh, do our work on the internet. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Yoshida-san. Uh, I think I would interpret some of your remarks to suggest that the IGF has enormous potential, it has enormous capacity, that's all of you who are here and those who are listening and are participating. This is a body of some substance and it is an important one which, whose work should continue. So I, we have two other speakers left and I'm going to uh, ask first of all Paul Mitchell um, who has now spent two years as the chair uh, of the MAG, uh, the Multi-Stakeholder Advisory Group. As you think, Paul, about the challenges that lie ahead of us, looking ahead towards the Global Digital Compact and uh, the outcomes of the um, you know, future, um, the plans for the future, speculations for the future, uh, can you say a little bit about uh, the IGF's capacity to evolve? Because uh, your successor is going to have to adapt the IGF work towards an even larger agenda, I think, than it has already experienced. So perhaps you can opine on that for the benefit of your successor and those uh, who work with you to make the IGF such a useful body. I think the microphone is not... It is on? on? I can hear. Okay, thank you. Um, I think the most important element here is to rec remember that this is, a, this is a platform, a platform that can fill, ful fulfill multiple different types of objectives at the same time and can be good for, can be used for good, can be used for not so good. And it all depends on the creativity and the collaboration and the work ethic and the goals behind it that people are willing to put in their own investments in in order to make the results come alive. And just looking at around here, just at the beginning of this IGF, and you see the enthusiasm in some of the presentations today 
and you see the enthusiastic number of registrations at over 8,000 people, you just know there is something there that will shine and will really work for the betterment of humanity as long as we keep, keep in focus the platform collaboration and the fact that you can do anything with a will. So there you have it. Uh, where there's a will, there's a way. Uh, so, Amandeep, you are our closing uh, speaker in this session. Uh, and uh, as the uh, extraordinary uh, Secretary General's Tech Envoy, that's a wonderful title, uh, you've worked very hard to uh, help us uh, articulate uh, the challenges that this digital online environment poses. Uh, your work on the Global Digital Compact is notable and visible. Uh, as you know, uh, I am uh, persuaded that the IGF, which has functioned well and increasingly well over the last 18 years, has the capacity to be helpful in uh, instantiating and evolving that compact and maybe even suggesting components of it. Uh, we had a chance to meet with the two facilitators of the Global Digital Compact this morning. Uh, and uh, I'm pleased to say that we have an opportunity as the uh, leadership panel to continue our engagement with those two uh, facilitators. So Amandeep, perhaps your view about IGF and the role that it can play in helping to make the Global Digital Compact a useful and constructive object. Thank you, Wint, and it's a great pleasure to join my fellow members of the leadership panel to talk about the role of the IGF in the context of the Global Digital Compact, but also uh, share just a very brief thought on the internet we want. I think the in internet um, uh, is an extraordinary global resource, and the vision behind it needs to be refreshed at regular intervals. So what you uh, have today from all of us after uh, multiple engagements um, across different stakeholders is an attempt at refreshing that vision. And as my fellow panelists have said, this is a vision about an open, free, secure, inclusive, uh, and human-centered digital uh, future. And this aligns very much with the Secretary General's vision for the Global Digital Compact. Uh, a once-in-a-generation opportunity to come together and adopt a shared global framework for building uh, our digital future together at the Summit of the Future next year in September. Uh, the IGF, uh, the Internet Governance Forum, uh, is, um, uh, is a unique multi-stakeholder forum in the context of this unique global public resource. It has unique features which no other forum has, uh, the kind of participation that our Japanese hosts uh, can be proud of, uh, the kind of diversity that this forum uh, has, uh, and the depth of expertise that comes together in um, these uh, uh, rooms every, every year. So definitely, the IGF will play a central role in the implementation of the Global Digital Compact, which has to be multi-stakeholder as well. So if the path to the GDC is a multi-stakeholder path, the path beyond the GDC has to be multi-stakeholder as well. And in that future path, uh, the IGF will play its due role. Uh, it is, after all, uh, creation of the UN. It is a unique forum uh, and the only place where we can discuss the public policy aspects of the internet in this manner. And the internet is going to continue to play a role in our digital future and therefore the IGF will continue to play uh, that uh, role. Uh, you will 
tomorrow at the plenary session, uh, hear the Secretary General's uh, remarks on uh, this occasion, and he will reiterate his vision. He will reiterate, I'm sure, his support for the IGF and how it comes uh, into play in terms of our future uh, work. So thank you very much for the great inputs that came in from the Addis Ababa meetings into the Global Digital Compact process. And thank you very much for the inputs that are being generated this week, uh, starting today, day zero, uh, for the next phase of the Global Digital Compact process, which is going to be an intense negotiations phase ahead of the Summit of the Future. Thank you so much, Amandeep. Uh, I can imagine that some of the members of the panel who are sitting on the stage right now have other things they would like to say, but considering that we are essentially over the originally planned time, and I have a meeting I need to go to, uh, I am going to uh, ask you to thank our panel for their contributions and their uh, work, and to thank you also for all the contributions you have made up until now the contributions this week and those that you will make in the future. Thank you all very much for attending.